Hi, welcome to my garden here in Derbyshire. And today I'm going to be turning a bowl from this piece of ash. Uh, this was given to me by a friend of mine who's not with us anymore a few years ago. Uh, so I'm going to turn a, a bowl from this, but leave the corners on it. So here we can see the piece mounted on the lathe now and as you can see it's going to hit the support bar. But that's okay because I want the, the feet at the end of the uh, support for the bowl to be rounded anyway. Coming down to a point it will be too sharp so I want it to be rounded anyway. So I've got to knock these corners off now and just to the point where it rotates and then start turning the bowl. Now you can see I've knocked the corners off just enough so that it clears the support bar <coughs> and I can spin this up now knock it flat so that it's running true and then start turning it and I'll get back to you once I've done that. So I'm just going to cut the face off flat now this is now spinning fairly true so I'm just going to true it up properly and then these pieces here will become the actual pieces that sit on the table or on the tabletop. Uh, this is the underside of the piece so I'm going to, have to turn a bowl into this as we'll see. Just truing it up for now though. Get a bit more speed on it. I don't want to take too much off the centre here because this is going to become the foot that I'm going to use to, to turn the ball out on the face and then that will get taken off at the end. Carefully, of course, because that's the car is whipping around there, so I'm making sure I'm staying clear of that. stop that now and see what's actually going on. You can see I'm, I'm not actually catching this or this one but I am taking off here and here. So I'm going to come down now till I'm taking all four of them off evenly then I know I've got a flat base to work to. You can see here now that I've marked up for the dovetail for the jaws of the chuck when I reverse this so I need to leave this area uh, so I need to turn out now the bowl shape from the bottom of here and as I work out here I've got to come back down and leave these tips of the the points of the square um, so these are the pieces that will be resting on the tabletop uh, so I want to work out the arc in there and the bottom curve of the bowl uh, but again I've got to leave this because I need to reverse it later. Let's get a bit more speed on it.
further on now you can see a form the dovetail uh, is in this small tool just to clean up the edge and to gently scrape the bottom of the where the bolt's going to be obviously going to come back clean that up later with sandpaper etc etc so I just need to continue to take out the bulk of this material See one of the other things I did was I put a, a line around the outside where it's on the edge of here so that's going to be the outside edge of the actual bowl shape and then these are going to come down as like legs. So I'll carry on doing that. I've reversed the uh, position of the rest now and I just want to take some bulk out of these corners before I turn the inside of this too thin because otherwise I'll be hitting these corners quite hard and there won't be an awful lot of wood here to support it. So I'm going to take some of this off now. Again you can see I've drawn a, a ring around the point where it gets thinnest. That's where the bowl's going to, or the lip of the bowl's going to be. So I just need to work this corner out now to that. And you can see I've already been doing a little bit of it. So I'll just show you that. It doesn't take more and more of this corner off, I have to keep moving the rest around so that I don't have too much overhang. Got to be careful of the indexing plate here as well. You can see I'm taking some weight out of there. So now I've moved the rest back to the front of the piece. I've got my curve in here almost. There's a little bit of extra work I need to do on the edge, but I'll do that when I reverse it. Uh, I've taken most of the weight out of these corners now. So now I can go in here and take out the undercut on these corners, which will expose the void here. And will let me see the shape of this bowl a little bit better and I'll be able to finish the face of that. So I'll get on with that. going to get a lot thinner. Now you can see this is getting quite thin here. Uh, I don't want to go any thinner than that. It's still quite firm though because it's hard wood. I just need to take out the rest of this curve down to the point where I marked on the inside here which is about here and I'll, I'll mark that once I get a curve in there and then I can bring the bowl shape round to that. And I'll just, just get on with that now. I'm being very careful on my hand here because I don't want to get it caught on that edge, it's quite sharp and do some damage. And uh, so I'm just working it in here now, and I'm just taking this edge down so that it's the same thickness all the way up. Although, actually, looking at it, I actually like the idea of it getting slightly wider. So I might do that and make it firmer as well. We'll see. Just get in there now. So a little bit further on now, I've 
finished the shape of the bottom of that and done a, a first course sanding with some uh, 120 grit and I need to do some more work on the inside of these it's difficult to sand these so I'll probably do it by hand with a sanding disc or something afterwards uh, although it's pretty smooth now uh, done a little bit of sanding here as well and rounded some of these corners off although I need to go back to this and clean up some of these edges because I did a bit more turning on these to thin them off uh, so I'll do some more sanding there and then once I've done that I'll reverse the whole thing and we'll cut the ball out of the center I've got to the stage now where I've sanded this up to 400 grit and I've sanded the inside of these as well to 400 grit uh, using uh, my high speed multi-tool and just manually sanding this stuff at 400 and it's come up fairly nice, uh, probably a bit more before I put any finish on later on. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse this and turn the bowl, the inside out of the bowl. So I'll get on with that. So here we are now reversed and I've just trued it up just by putting a pencil on here and catching the high points and you can see I've got a couple of marks here. Tap this back and then get it level which I've got to now and now I'm just going to tighten this up, check it again that's really nice and true so I'm just going to uh, sand this now whilst it's spinning just to clean up this edge and to clean up this top surface here and then I'm going to start cutting the center out of that so I'll get on with that now this is 180 grit Abronet fairly low speed don't really want to get my hand caught in that when it's going around so and I'll come back to these individual pieces here with the ice high speed tool and sand the marks out of there don't want to go any thinner there because that's quite thin at the moment. That little point where the, the lip of the bowl is going to be is only about 3mm thick. I've sanded this uh, a little bit more now, I'm going to do some more later. But I'm now going to start turning the inner side of the bowl. Speed on that. Again, just following the contour there, I need to take a little bit more out and then I can start sanding before I go much deeper. So I've switched to this tool now just as a scraper and I'm just going to gently take out a little bit more of the wall and round the base there. leaves a fairly nice finish. Keep going and I'll get back to you when I've uh, got a bit further on. And you saw me cutting then quite hard sometimes but also just trying out that finish cut just get a feel for what this the, the finish cut would be like on this timber and uh, and you can see that when you're going in hard you get all these chip outs but when you go nice and gentle take out those lumps 
gentle scrape. And again, that's not the finished surface, but you can see it's a much nicer surface. Still got the chip out, so I'm gonna have to be careful when I get down to the area where I want. Where as I'm coming down here, I'm gonna have to be very, very gentle and take out some of those bumps and lumps. But uh, still plenty of wall thickness there, really. And as I start to get close to the actual level that I want, for both this area and this bottom area here, I start to do lighter and lighter cuts because I don't want any tear out to tear down beyond the point where I want the surface to be because then I'd have to go thinner than I want. So I'm being gentle as I, as I approach the surface I want. So a couple more cleaning cuts here just to get this base uh, more flat, it's got a couple of little ridges in it, so I'll just work at those now. Turn to my skew chisel now, which has got a flat base just to get this centre here. as a scraper there, only very very gently touching the surface just to take out any inconsistencies and there's still a little one just here so I'll do a little bit more work on that. Just going to do some coarse sanding now, this is 80 grit so really hard stuff but this wood is quite hard so it's hardly going to make a mark on it. pushing there with any force, I don't want to generate any heat, just let the, the net do its work. Also don't forget this lid. So it's quite hard stuff, and you can see when it's starting to pick out some of the points that are going to cause me problems to get a finish where it's torn the grain as it's come across the grain with this rounded area here. So I'll have to just do a bit more work on that area. And again, it's got a fairly reasonable wall thickness so I don't need to worry too much about going through. So I'll just keep sanding and I'll work my way up the grits. It sounds crazy but it's starting to get a bit of a sheen on it with 80 grit, that's how hard this wood is. So here you can see now that I've uh, finished sanding it up and I've just put some tea coil on here now and it's just uh, just drying out and I've got the rag here with tea coil on. So I'm just keeping it damp for a moment just to make sure it's all soaked in and it's all covered. Also it looks nice when you first put it on. Obviously it'll dry to a matte finish. I'll then put some wax on it. And of course, once I take it off the lathe, I've then got to get rid of the foot that's on the bottom, and I'll do that by just sanding it off, and then uh, going up through the grits and making that all uh, all smooth as well. So leave this to dry overnight, do the foot, T-coil that as well, and uh, that should be it. So there we go.